Ramagut, uh, Ceann Corla. Uh, Ceann Corla, we find ourselves at a crossroads again in our long fight with COVID-19. After three very long months of living under level five restrictions, our third lockdown of this pandemic, people are, I think, understandably fed up. And indeed, many of them are angry and frustrated. Thousands haven't seen a day's work in a year. Many haven't seen family or friends in months and small businesses are either closing or will struggle to survive. It's fair to say that people have made huge sacrifices to suppress the virus following the dangerous position that we found ourselves in after Christmas. However, infection rates remain very high. Nefes has warned that we are in a very volatile, a very precarious position and people are now anxious about the possibility of a fourth wave. They're worried about the prospect of a lost uh, summer after months of slogging it out with this virus. So we're now uh, approaching April 5th, the date that the public had hoped would bring some relief to restrictions. And yet people are still waiting to hear the government's plan as to what lies ahead. Indeed, instead of clear communication and strong leadership, what we have had throughout this crisis is mixed messages and kite flying. And to say that people now are at the end of their tether is uh, in many cases an understatement. They've seen government fail to do what needs to be done to get ahead of the virus, to pave a pathway for a safe reopening of our society, and this has left many people in disbelief. I refer specifically to a stuttering vaccine rollout, a failure to adequately ramp up testing and tracing, and the absolute carte blanche that have been given to meat factories, for example, with devastating consequences. But I think it's the refusal to deal with the issue of international travel that stands at, at top of the list. The lack of common sense in government policy is absolutely mesmerizing because the situation is that people can't go five kilometers from their home, but have to watch as up to 10,000 people a week arrive here from abroad, many of which are non-essential trips, including people on holidays. As early as last May, Count Corla public health officials were urging government to implement a full and proper form of mandatory quarantine. These calls were ignored um, and this has left us exposed. And in the time, in the meantime, thousands have traveled here from other countries. We're 10 months later and government has introduced a scheme that doesn't go far enough. The list of 33 countries is far too limited. And indeed, only two of those 33 countries in any event have direct fl flights into Ireland. So we have a half-baked plan. We're left vulnerable to the importation of the virus and to further dangerous variants. And the threat from which has been keenly highlighted in NEFIT's latest letter to government last week. Truth is we need a system of real mandatory quarantine for all non-essential arrivals from all countries. That's the only thing that will get the job done. It will send a message to international travellers that now is not the time to come Thank here. You, Deputy McDonald, the task the now must up. be to reopen as safely as possible, as soon as possible, and ignoring the need for a proper quarantine system jeopardises all, right. Thank you very all much, of that. McDonald, so, the time is up. Uh, yeah. Well, no, the time is up, Deputy. I'm sorry. Ah, no, please. You're, you're way over time, Deputy. Act. Thank you. Thank well, you very much. Uh, uh, Taoiseach, please. Well, could I first of all say that the situation in relation uh, to the virus is very fragile? Uh, and I recall when I came in here uh, early this year when we had 42,000 cases um, in one week, uh, we had 2,000 people in hospital. Uh, and I made it clear on that occasion uh, that uh, I wanted to see a persistent suppression of the, of the virus.
Now, we currently have, in the last seven days, we had 3,800 cases, and we have 325 or 329, maybe, uh, latest in hospital. The point there is that the sacrifices that the people have made has had an impact on getting case numbers dramatically down from that January figure, getting hospitalizations dramatically down, and the numbers in ICU, which are currently at 76. Um, that needs to be said. The level five restrictions have worked effectively to bring numbers down very, very significantly from where they were. That needs to be acknowledged, and people need to know that, and not to be given mixed messages by the opposition consistently and trying to uh, blur the facts. But the numbers are still high, relatively high, um, compared to wave one and wave two. And the fundamental reason for that is we're dealing with a variant that is highly transmissible and more dangerous. And that's the context. And we've been very clear that increased mobility can be a factor in facilitating the spread of the variant. And that is why we are currently in level five. And I've been very consistent in saying publicly uh, and in every fora, no decision has been made in relation uh, to uh, the post April the 5th situation. No decision has been made. Uh, and we'll be engaging with public health advice uh, and other research in relation to this. Uh, we do acknowledge, of course, the enormous stress and strain and difficulties the current lockdown is imposing on people in terms of their personal restrictions of their freedom and their liberties, in terms of being within five kilometers, uh, and in terms of not meeting up with others. Uh, but the reason for that is we do not want to go back to a situation where we have 2,000 people in hospital, or indeed that we have 42,000 um, know, um, cases uh, and, and so forth um, in, in, in a given week. Uh, and that's what we must avoid. Um, and the variant is essentially a, a new virus in terms of endeavoring to contain it. And that governs how we will approach um, the phase after um, April the 5th. I'm watching other countries um, in terms of Czech, Czechia, um, in terms of uh, France now and Germany, um, Slovakia, um, a whole range of countries in Europe where the trajectory is upwards. Um, ours is flattening and in some of the last seven days has gone back up. Um, and, and that's something we need to be taken into account very seriously. Uh, and in terms of mandatory quarantining, we're the first country in the European Union to introduce mandatory hotel quarantine. And I want to say to the deputy, look, I want to try and develop a united front here. But it was the deputy who was encouraging people and pressing the government to facilitate travel at Christmas time. It was Deputy MacDonald was saying that publicly. Uh, and and had, the deputy had her definition of what constituted essential travel. And in fact, up to quite, last, up to quite, re quite recently, you were saying mandatory quarantine for non-essential travel, never defining, uh, missing the point about mandatory quarantining in the first instance. Uh, because once you have mandatory quarantine, you're, you're, it's Thank designed you, to stop the variant. And it's the legislation obliges government to consult with the public health. It's based on the variant and at very high incidence thank rates. Thank you very much. And Time is up. Recommendations Tisha, thank will you. come from the chief medical officer in terms of it adding other countries. But we are the first in Europe to introduce this. Um, and I thank think you that should also be acknowledged. Uh, Deputy <coughs> MacDonald. Gordon, the situation uh, is fragile and that fragility is undoubtedly added to by the reality of increased uh, variants. And the question that arises is how do we get from under this how do we carve out a pathway where we can reopen safely and where society and indeed the economy can remain open? Uh, and it, it, it is very, very clear at this stage that in the absence of adequate testing and tracing, in the absence of a very efficient and safe vaccination program, and in the absence of the necessary protections at our ports and airports, we will not be in a position to reopen in a way that is safe and in a way that can be sustained. So let me return to my question, which essentially revolves around mandatory hotel quarantine for all non-essential travel. The government has taken a half measure and half measures won't cut it. 
uh, the, the fragility and the danger of the situation has been amplified you, again Deputy. here today. The efforts of people to get past this virus have been recorded. What we need now is the government to do the right thank thing. You very much, we need Deputy. a full, effective, mandatory system of hotel quarantine. And the government needs to act on this and act on it swiftly. Thank you very much. Thishuk. I think the Deputy needs to define what uh, she means by non-essential travel. Uh, because at Christmas time, the deputy had a de definition of non-essential travel as meaning that people who were coming home to meet their parents was deemed to be, you know, essential. You said that was essential travel, um, and uh, I think you need to be uh, come clean with the people now in terms of what you are actually saying in relation uh, to this. Um, we're we're bringing in mandatory hotel quarantining, um, and um, uh, countries will be added um, as recommended by, by by public health, go to government. Um, uh, in addition to the 33 countries uh, that are already on the Schedule 2 list. Um, and that's in addition to a whole range of other measures that we've taken in terms of the obligation on the negative PCR test, in terms of mandatory home quarantining that has been uh, a, a legal imperative now uh, for the last number of weeks, uh, and in terms of non-essential travel being fined and so on, but, uh, and, and, and police checks at the airports. Um, vaccination is the key. Um, approach a uh, factor as well in terms of dealing with the virus um, and up to date thank you, we have over 700,000 people now 700,000 doses sorry uh, have been uh, administered um, in the country uh, we are looking forward to a higher supplies in April May um, and June Excellent. thank you the time is up now uh, and, please and thank you there will be significantly time ramped up. up vaccines in addition to what we've already done time which has up, been very please. effective in bringing down the levels of, of disease yes